Hey everyone, I'm gonna give a quick overview on how to model your data in a NoSQL document database. So this is a question I get quite frequently um, because a lot of people, they come from a relational database and the concept of NoSQL and having a unstructured or semi-structured format um, is, a, is a very new concept to them. Uh, so this should clear things up. It's, it's by no means a full in-depth uh, analysis on the ways uh, to model your data. This is just a quick overview uh, to get you in the right direction. Uh, the database that we will be using in this example is Couchbase. Um, in particular, I'm using Couchbase 4.5. Um, but the, the concepts in terms of data modeling should, uh, for the most part, be uh, pretty similar across the board. So on my screen, you actually see uh, three different tables. And then, of course, I have a query in here as well. Um, so think of this as relational database tables. It could be uh, Microsoft SQL Server. It could be Oracle. Uh, it could be uh, any, any of the mix. Uh, so we have these three tables. We have a, a people table, a games table, and a transaction table. So let's, let's assume that this is a kind of shopping cart. Um, so you have people, you have games that are available for purchase, and then you have a list of transactions uh, for whoever purchased these games and what order number or what date they fall on. Uh, so uh, looking at this, this uh, transaction table, you can see that uh, there are four transactions. Uh, two are for part of the same order. Uh, so uh, order number one, two, three, four um, is referred to as uh, my person ID. Uh, and then the games purchased are, of course, uh, one and two, uh, which would be Pokemon Red and Dark Souls three, um, and then uh, pretty much the same thing goes uh, for the following transactions, except for uh, the third transaction would be um, two purchases of the same game. Uh, so when we look at the query here, uh, you can see that uh, we're we're doing a pretty standard relational database query. Um, so we're selecting the the person first name, person last name, person email, the game name, the game price and how many of that game was purchased in this single transaction. So we're selecting it from the transactions table. Um, we're aliasing it as T, and then we're joining the other two tables. Uh, these are inner joins. Um, so, so pretty standard stuff. Uh, so the, the question is, how, how do I model this data in a NoSQL database? Uh, so if I, I am, actually do have Couchbase server up and running on my machine. Um, but this is, well, I'm strictly doing data modeling right now. This, this is really uh, not dependent on Couchbase at this point in time. So let's, let's say we want to keep our data kind of in a similar structure to that we saw in a relation, relational database. So in this example, I have a bunch of document IDs. Documents are, are NoSQL JSON documents. So I have a bunch of document IDs, game one, two, three, and four. And what I've done is I've, I've made them the same. So one, two, three, and four uh, from this games table. And if I click on any one of them, uh, you can see that it has the uh, particular game name and the price. I also, if I expand here, I also have another document uh, type. So these are these are just keys. I, I'm, I chose to use a different key name uh, prefixed uh, to say, hey, this is a different document type. Uh, but let's say, for example, we wanna look at a person document. Uh, so here, this um, we have a first name, last name, and email, and that's more similarly to our people table. First name, last name, and email, and then instead of an ID, uh, we really just have a document key that, uh, like I said, um, this is just a naming convention. It could be really anything that you want. It could be uh, this, this convention that I can remember. It could be um, some kind of incrementing value, similar to how you would in a relational database. Uh, it could be pretty much whatever you really want. Uh, finally, I do have the uh, third document type in this case. This would be similar to our transaction table. Uh, in this case, I have a, a transaction here. It's uh, order number one, two, three, four. It has a date. Um, this is where things are pretty similar to a relational database and the fact that I have a person ID property in this JSON document. And this person ID references it. So it has the same key it has the same value as that particular key name, so person and reboy. Um, and I also have a reference to um, 
game one for the particular game ID, and I have a quantity of one. So when it comes down to querying this, I mean, there's several ways that you can do that. Uh, you could do a, a document lookup based on key, so a key value lookup. So I would say I would get this particular uh, transaction. I know the person ID at this point, so I can do another lookup for that particular document based on this key, same with game. Or uh, this is where things get very specific to NoSQL, or not NoSQL, Couchbase, uh, is we can actually run SQL-like queries against the database. So um, that's called nickel. Uh, I do have something in here, so I'll change the query up a bit. Um, so in this example, um, this is actually, I'm copying and pasting to save time here. So this is a query that was similar to the one we saw uh, for, say, MySQL or uh, SQL Server. Um, but for the most part, it's the same. So uh, we're selecting the first name, last name, and email, uh, the game name, price, and quantity, same parameters we saw in the relational database. Where things get a little different is we're selecting it from our bucket name, which is our storage container. Um, and since all of our documents exist in the same bucket, uh, we are joining within that same bucket as well. And you can see we're still aliasing it as the same things. Uh, and then on keys, so wherever the document matches these particular keys. So if I execute it, uh, these are the results that we get, something uh, that we would expect uh, in a relational query. So uh, you saw that using this approach of uh, using key names inside as properties as well as the, as the document key, uh, we can really keep that relational kind of structure. And if you really wanted to, we could look at it like as if it was a uh, relational database, even though it is not. But that's one way that you can model your data. If, you, if you're really stuck on uh, making it look like a relational database, you absolutely could do that. Uh, the other way that you can do it is if we go back to data buckets, I have another bucket here uh, called embedded. It's just a random name I came up with. Um, we have a scenario, well, we have these three tables. Um, chances are, uh, for transactions, we're always going to be joining. We're always going to be joining against these other two tables. There's, there's rarely a need where we'll just query this transaction table alone and be done with it. So in that scenario, um, it often makes sense to uh, store all of that data inside of a single NoSQL document because NoSQL documents can be very complex. Uh, they don't need to be flat like uh, you saw in the previous, previous example. So in this case, I have, a, I have a transaction one. I have my first name, last name, and all of that good information. Uh, but for games, so my purchase, this, this transaction represents a particular purchase. So in this particular purchase, the receipt, uh, I have two games that I purchased, uh, Pokemon Red and Dark Souls 3. Um, or if I wanted to go back and look at this other one, um, in this case, this is the example where I per uh, where this Matt Groves person uh, purchased two of the same game. So it's just an array, and then uh, all of our game objects are inside of that array. So we're storing all of that information together. And that's it's all right that we have duplicate information. Um, when you're working with NoSQL, you don't uh, need to normalize your data, um, leaving it as denormalized is perfectly all right. Um, it's just it's just the NoSQL way to do things. So that's two different ways to to model your data. So if I wanted to query this uh, this this new approach, the embedded type approach, I can go to my uh, query workbench here. I'm going to load that query. I'm going to paste it in here. Uh, so. Here, what we have is I'm selecting things a little differently. I'm selecting the order number, first name, last name, email from the transaction. Um, the name and the price of the game is going to be a little different here. I'm also doing uh, an aggregate function here, so I'm counting. Uh, so that way we can um, worry about the duplicates as they happen. Duplicates being um, in case somebody purchased more than one of the same thing in a single transaction. Uh, so here I'm selecting it from the embedded bucket aliasing it as T for transaction. Uh, but like we saw previously, there is an array um, inside of these documents. There's an array of games. Uh, so what we have to do is we have to do what's called an unnest if we want to treat it similarly to how we did 
um, in the previous uh, example. So we're unnesting games, that array, we're flattening it out, and then we're also doing a group by, same as how we would see it in a relational database. Uh, so we're grouping by in the same order that they appear in the select, uh, so that way we can do this nice count. And if we run it, um, we get uh, the same the same result that we would have um, in the previous example. Uh, so that's two different ways. So just just to reiterate here, we can do more of like a referred approach where we have a bunch of different documents uh, that kind of represent uh, one thing at a time. So one game, uh, one person, and then at which point inside of the transaction documents, we refer to whatever's relevant versus uh, if we look at the embedded approach, uh, we just mash everything into a single JSON document because it can absolutely handle it. And then being uh, Couchbase, having its nickel technology for, for querying, it makes this data uh, easy to maintain uh, and query regardless on how it looks.